Hi, George. How are you? I just tell very you. well, thank you, sir. Very well. Thank you so much for joining me on the desert island this morning. My pleasure. My pleasure. I wore my Hawaiian shirt specially for this. I'm sorry I'm in the office, but uh, you know I'm quite happy to be in the office as well. Of course, yeah. And, and how are things there for you? Really, really good. Really good. The team are back in. Um, I'm sitting back at my desk. That is the happiest day. Um, and it's it. God, it's a beautiful day in England. So you know, I, I couldn't say anything more. It's a really, really good start to the day. So, and I get to see you, especially with that Hawaiian, sh Hawaiian shirt. I'm like, yeah, you're rocking it. I mean, what can I say? I mean, I, I almost feel like I blend in with the palm trees around me here. Um, I, I, I wish I had that. I'm sorry. I've got I've got I've got my name there, but that's all I've got behind me. Um, and I've got a view of uh, my design team. So that's kind of the uh, the great thing. What more do we need? Exactly. Exactly. What more do we need? So great to have you. Um, I'm sure that you've managed to um, pack some watches for your trip to the desert island. And uh, I can't wait to get going. I've got my I've got my drink here, my secret recipe coconut cocktail. Um, oh. What, 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 if, if, if you were joining me here, George, what, what drink would you be uh, packing if, for that? If I was having a cocktail, I would have a tequila lime and soda. I'm sorry, way that no Negroni here, but definitely a tequila lime and soda. Um, I actually do have a drink. I have a drink that I normally have in the office that is um, Japanese green tea. Um, and for me, this is my, uh, it's better than coffee. So this is keeping me up, keeping me going. Uh, and a good friend of mine, uh, Hiroshi, um, put, uh, kind of got me addicted to this, and, I'm, I, and it's a great addiction to have. Fantastic. So we've talked about our drinks. Let's get into the watches. I, George, I don't want to uh, upstage your watches this morning, but in honour of you as a guest with me on the island, I did strap on my uh, original uh, Bamford and Sons Capri. Oh my goodness! Oh wow! Now <laughs> Do you that remember really these? is that really is. A t I remember those. I remember going to meet the guys from um, uh, Capri Watches, and and oh my god! Wow. That's yeah. a blast from the past. Yeah, yeah. that's and amazing. It's badged up, Capri it's watch, Bamford and watch. Sons. Such a great watch! Oh my goodness! Yeah, it's great. It's great because it, it, as we as we said wow. earlier, it's seriously hot uh, it, for us today here, yeah. and so uh, it's light, it's comfortable. I can go in the pool cool. later. Fantastic. It's cool. I'm so pleased. Um, I am. I'm oh, sorry. I you you only said X a, a small amount of watches, but I kind of offloaded a hell of a lot i'm sorry about it's that perfect. It, the more the merrier i'm a maximalist george so this yeah. for me is perfect and and i'm kind of the same is i wanted to touch on each little note and kind of give you some ideas great so let's let's kick off then you you tell me which watch you would like to uh discuss first george um if if okay i think i'm going to start with what started everything for me okay yeah brilliant that's the brightling navitimer Ah, oh, what a great watch. So given to me in 1996, this is the first watch that I took to bits and it started my kind of love affair with watches. Um, you know, it even, it has an engraving on the back. I didn't take a photograph of the engraving, but it, it's from my parents. And oh. when I spoke to my father about it, he brought it for a hundred and, uh, sorry, 200 pounds. Um, and, you know, if I kind of show you, there's loads of nick marks, there's loads of damage. I've, I, I've done all the damage um, because I used to use a pen knife and pop it open and have a look at it. Um, the, hands, the hands aren't good. You know, the loom is gone in them. It's gone back to Breitling X amount of times. It's gone in for a service X amount of times. But for me, this, this is the watch that I learned how to take to bits. Myself, there was no YouTube channel. My parents gave it to me for Christmas. Um, Boxing Day, it was in pieces. So, um, and that's kind of, and that, that started my kind of, it, it was a light bulb moment for watches for me, was this watch. And I know it's not the easiest to take to bits. And I know that everyone would have gone, you should have done it on this. Why would you do it on an avatimer? But for me, I wanted to know how the heart works. Yeah. And I wanted to know, you know, really how does it beat how does the engine work now I, i'm not one of these first like take take to bits of watch and kind of you know i used to take tvs to bits i used to take engines to bits i used to so 
all the time. I, I was, I, 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 I'm dyslexic, so I always wanted to, I couldn't read very well. So it's very much what, what can I do? What, what was the thing of getting into that? What, and so that was very much engines. I used to strip engines, rebuild them. Uh, age of nine, 10, I learned how to weld. You know, I was always that kind of person, but it was very much self-taught. Fantastic. I'm going to share a picture that you sent through so we can have a good look at the watch. Um, here we go. Super cool. Oh, yes. And you can see that I've done a brightening background for that. Yeah. Yeah, and I love it. I, I, I'm fascinated by this. What was it then that, so obviously you've talked about the fact that you just took it apart. And so that kind of kinesthetic learning was very important to you and was a key development for you. But what, what, so you open it on Christmas Day. At what point did you decide that actually I'm going to take this apart? Because I think it's brilliant that you did, and I'm fascinated by the mind, kind of the process in your mind of deciding that just had to be what happened next. So I'd probably say Christmas lunch, um, afternoon, watch the movie, you know, we've done church, done all of the stuff that you do on Christmas, and I think it was in the evening. I, I'm, I'm one of these people that, I, I'm not a, I, I, don't, I don't love sleeping loads, so I love kind of, I love my brain when it kind of goes and does weird and wonderful things. So I used to always get up early as a kid. So I used to be like four o'clock, I'd get up and I'd go and strip a net, uh, strip of TV and my, or the juicer would be taken to bits and, and I would have changed the speed of the juicer because I would think it was too slow. Um, there was always a parts bin of all crap that I'd taken out of the thing that was restrictors and all those different things. Yeah. The same with this Breitling, I mean, you know, I put it back together. I was very pleased I put it back together, but I wasn't, you know, my watchmakers here take the piss out of me because I'm very brutal of how I do things. I'm very much boom, boom, you know, mm. and some things don't go back in. So I remember that um, day after Boxing Day, I remember that the chronograph function didn't work. And I was like, yeah, okay, I'm going to take it back to bits and put it back together again. Um, I think it was that evening. I think it was that evening. And, and I, you know, my parents were up, um, uh, you know, talking about how great Christmas was. And I think that evening I was in my bedroom and I was like, I was, I had a, um, I had a, a cloth on the floor and I, I sat on the floor doing it with my, and I had a pen knife and I had a glass of screwdriver and that was it. It's fantastic. And this is kind of like, for some people, that's the antithesis of, um, of what people are as a collector. Because I guess in, 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 when we talk uh, in this um, series to collectors, I always feel that the, the, there are very few people who sit in the middle of either being a collector who like to keep their watches that often don't wear them. So like Auro Montanari is a classic example of somebody that collects the watches, keeps them in boxes and day to day just wears whatever, you know, um, whatever watch for, for living. What I call then, yeah, exactly. And then, then the other end of the spectrum are people who won't buy a watch, um, on a collector, sorry, who won't buy a watch unless they're going to wear it because they believe yeah. in wearing them. So then, that, that, in my mind, that's kind of the two ends of the spectrum. But then you go way beyond that in so much as I'm not just going to wear this. I'm actually going to going to destroy it uh, um, at well, the very first opportunity. I wouldn't say I destroy it. I just I, I love I love changing things. Yeah. I mean, you know, at the moment I've got the Defy Lab on. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I didn't send you an image because I was just I, I put it on this morning. Um, and you know. I love it, but I changed the rubber strap. I, I, you know, Zenith yeah. had another strap. I remember when I was with Julian Tony, I, I just went, oh my God, I really love this. And it was a prototype rubber strap. Can I nick it? And I literally did it there and then on his desk. Amazing. And, you know, that was for me, one of those things. I was just like, I really want that strap on this watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Sorry. I shouldn't have said destroy. I meant just like dismantle experiment. I, no, no, I, 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 but I, I like understanding. I, you know, yeah. every time we have a watch in, I buy a watch either. Well, I don't anymore, but my watchmakers take it to bits to have a look at how it's made. I want to know. Mm. I did recently, I did take a, um, I've got a Hoyer, uh, Audi, um, Hoyer, you oh, know, yeah. the Tenium, and I, Kind of geeked out so um am i being weird on this um i'll see if i can find the video to show you but i basically i i took it a bit because i wanted to see how the movement was uh and it's a Le Marnier movement and it's it's a really beautiful movement 
Okay. So yes, I am, but I'm not a, now. Now, if you're classing me as a destroyer, I'm not a destroyer. I'm, I preserve, but I, I like, I love looking at how is it made, what, what's, you know, how even how they put the movement into the case. Yeah. Okay. That that for me just it makes me so happy to kind of understand in a different different mm. mind. And is is any watch off limits to you in terms of? I mean, I, you know, I, I'm, in terms of your collection is. Oh wow! Okay. So that was kind of nice. It was, it was a nice. Um, any watch that's off limits. But you uh, would, would think that actually it's best to not for me to take this watch apart. For me, uh, well, this watch I wouldn't can't take apart because this is you know it's a prototype. Um, I, I've you know I change the strap. I'll do some other things. You know most watches really I love them how they are. Yeah. But I, I but I but I do love chatting to the watchmakers and understanding how, how things have been put together. And I think that's my inquisitive mind. I yeah. haven't got time to do it anymore. But also the other thing is, you know, I was a photographer, so that's where I trained. I trained as a par at Parsons as a photographer. And I always loved that idea of when I was developing photographs and you have this blank sheet of paper and then it, it kind of, the photograph comes alive. And for me, the dial, the hands, the case, and then the movement, that all comes alive when when you actually analyze everything together and that's that's what i look at as i look at you know the whole thing coming together and going oh yeah now i understand how they put the movement in i understand all the things and and then i go god it's a genius watch i mean that audi watch i love how it's all been put together hmm. Brilliant. And I'm taking you on a tangent of other watches, I'm sorry. No, no, it's brilliant. I, I, I can see now the kind of motivation for you to set up the business that you did with the Bamford Watch Department. So um, I'm just trying to think of what I take you on to next. I'm yeah, thinking, okay. I'm thinking to myself is, do I take you to a prototype that I love, but it is a very weird watch? Um, or do I talk to you about something that makes me smile. I mean, it's very much up to you if, you know, we let's could end. Go, let's go with the, um, let's go with this unusual prototype. I like the okay. and, the, and the wacky. So this is something that um, I was so pleased to get uh, that is a bund, but it's the, the digital bund. Well, okay, I'm going to sh share a picture of this straight away because, yeah, this uh, watch really stood out to me. There we go. Yeah, so this is in my, you know, this is upstairs in the watchmaker's uh, den. Uh, uh, and uh, this, I just love the idea of digital and non-digital together. I know it's a digital movement, but I love the idea of, you know, regular hands and uh, digital together. And that was what this watch embodied for me was, the two combinations coming together. Um, it, it is it, what I've been told, but I'm sure your viewers will give better views on it. Um, it is a prototype, you know, they only produced X amount of them. Um, and it's, it was the kind of meant to be the next day, the step of the Bund. But for me, I love how Hoyer's written. I love how the hands are, you know, I, there's, there's something wonderful when you see the hands just coming up and going down. I love the numbering. I love how the case is. I love that it's got four screws to take off the back. Yeah. Now for me, that's, that's just like, there's no kind of proper locks. So it's just four screws. Yeah. And that's, a cool thing and and you know and i got a i, I got a, a wise um uh kind of kadora type strap for it because i thought it would look good on it mm -hmm. um i love the weird weird places that the uh the two buttons are yeah. you know if you looked at the design there's something wonderful if you said that there's no digital if i took off the digital side you would go god that's a sexy watch yeah. and then you put the digital and you're going what the beep is that and that's what i love about it yeah. is it and it's, you know, I wear a watch for me. Mm -hmm. I don't wear it to kind of go, hey, you know, I'm showing off, this is this. I wear it for me. And that's why I love this. You know, it's like the old, um, I don't know, the Hoyer Kentuckys. Oh, yeah, okay. Or, or um, the Tombstone. You know, for me, um, I, I'm seeing like I've got a few, but I, I literally just changed the battery. What should I get? Um, I changed the battery in a Kentucky. Um, and I know I'm pulling watches out, but I do have it in my rucksack somewhere. Um, I will fiddle around. Ah, oh, there we go. So 
I uh, so I I've, I've got a Manhattan at the moment. So basically, um, but I blackened wow. the Manhattan. Um, I love the tombstone. Same same idea as this. Yeah, it's two two worlds colliding into one watch, and that's what I what I wanted to kind of talk about for me is these two two worlds colliding. Mm. Um, Manhattan. The reason why I blackened it because I thought it would actually be really really cool to blackness and and yeah. just something totally different and yeah. unique. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the, the 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 blacking out of watches is something that is not uncommon to see now. But you were at the forefront of that. This was something that was, you know, really a, a one of your signatures in the in the early days of what you have now turned, you know, into this massive enterprise. I I would say yes and no, and the you know, I'd love to say that I was the forefront, but I, I'm, I wasn't the forefront because you look at Porsche design, you look at Hoyer, you look at, you know, um, the Living Daylights Hoyer, you look at um, some of the, um, you, you just look at the Porsche design watches, you look at uh, Le Marnier's, the militaries, the greens, the blacks. It happened in the 80s. Mm. You know, black watches were very cool in the 80s so it, i i used to go oh my god you know i'm i'm the you know no not at all i you know it very much there was some cool painted black mm -hmm. now yes a pvd dlc mgtc coating mm -hmm. is a different way of doing it mm. but the black watches have been around for a while so i i would say to you is I, i'm i want to pat myself on the back and go yes i was the one that did it no i i i, I but I think the trend happened and yeah. I think personalization for me is the key bit. Yeah. Um, and that was one of my things of like, you know, what is that? Yeah. I think that's very humble of you because I do think that you are seen as one of the, like the, the, the forerunners in that, in that customization Then maybe, you know, the black watches existed, but you reinvented that for a different kind of time and a different kind of client, I guess. So, um, well, thank you very much. I mean, my, my ego is going to be twice the size. I'm not going to get out of my office now. So thank you, thank you so much for saying that. Um, I, I was trying to think of um, a watch that, you know, there's two, there's a few watches here. Uh, I'm not blowing smoke up your ass, um, but I'm, I'm going to bring up the Revolution um, Carrera, if that's all right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, cool. Um, the reason why I want to bring this up is because I got asked what would be a future classic. Um, and I think there's um, the Zenith um, cover girl, the, uh, uh, the Hodinkee Carrera. So this is the, the Hodinkee Carrera. I was lucky to get one. Mm -hmm. uh, um, the, sorry, not Hodinkee, sorry, Revolution, the Hodinkee Carrera, the skipper. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, these for me are future classics because you know how many they're produced. Yeah. You know that they're a great watch. Um, I think that they really are. Um, you know, there's an Omega. There's the, if you look at them, they are the future classic. Speedy Tuesday Omegas. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just trying to think of the IWC Hoodinky, the, mm -hmm. uh, the revolution uh, with um, Cleverly, um, uh, IWC. I mean, there's some really great watches that are all going to be, you know, I can imagine in 20 years time, these are going to be the box fresh sneakers, um, you know, the, the um, Jordan one type things that people go, oh my God, mm -hmm. I can't believe you've got one of those and they're mint, mint, mint condition. Yeah. I can imagine the Italians talking about, have you got, you yeah. know, uh, the blue, um, blue Carrera. Yeah. And, you know, this is going to be a track. That for me would be the future classic. So that's what I wanted to kind of put mm -hmm. on to you. I, I, I would love to, uh, you know, I'm going to say our solar blue with Zenith. That was a real kind of, and um, I know that there's one that I wanted to talk about was the radar, but I've done two photographs. I'm sure that yeah. I did a photograph of this one mm -hmm. because, uh, but I am plugging, I'm not plugging you guys. I'm, I'm plugging the whole idea of this future classic. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, I mean, it, it's important, isn't it? Because I think collectors love nothing more than having the knowledge that they own a piece that is, is finite. Now, obviously all watch runs are, are, are finite at some point, but to actually have such small runs and to know that you 
have one of those pieces is is important isn't it to collectors yeah i'm just looking on the back of this one and and i i, I know that i'm uh, there's the radar as well that we're going to be put up but there was only a hundred of these uh, um produced mm -hmm. yeah. um and you know there's the same with the radar the zenith radar yeah, uh, and I, I'm I'll, I'm segueing onto the radar because I think that's kind of a good one. But I, I you know, there's only a hundred of these Carreras produced. Yeah. Now, for me, that's that's like, I mean, um, what is it? It's uh, it's, uh, it's the bee's knees. It's the, uh, it's the dogs, whatever. So it's yeah, the yeah. it's rocking horse, whatever. Yeah. You know, these are the unicorn watches that if you think. A mint one of them. Mine is never going to be mint because I beat the sh beep out of it. Yeah. Um, but um, you know, I can imagine them turning up, and that's the thing that I, yeah. I I think about these is, you know, there is other watches. Yes, there's some great Patek, some great this, some great this. Yeah. But you look at them and you go, are they going to be? You know, are the and and you've probably been to some of these great watch halls where you see tons of vintage watches, yep. you know, you see X amount of all rows and rows and rows and rows of, of, you know, this watch or this watch or this watch. And they're all in plastic boxes and everyone goes, oh my God, you know, and it yep. makes them not rare. You know, you won't see a hundred, you won't see 20 of those in there because that's really a big percentage, well, it's 20% of the hundred watches that are out there. Yes. So you probably see two, maybe three, max, max. Yeah, yeah. And that's the cool thing for me is when I look at these collectibles, you know, I look at them and think, actually, they are going to be the future classics because you because there is that finite amount. Yeah, you absolutely. Know, the Zenith Solo Blue, I mean, there was 25 of them. Yeah. And I know, I know who's got three of them. Yeah. And is an Italian collector. And he he has he's wearing one, and he's kept the other two in a safe. Right. So already, you look at the percentage of that, yeah. and he went. He said, "I said, why why are you keeping it in the safe?" And he said, "Well, I've got my two sons." And I went, "Okay." And his two sons are uh, three and four, I think it is, or uh, you know, they're they're young. Mm -hmm. And he said, "I'm going to give them to them on their twenty first birthday." Perfect. So so you think they're going to stay in a safe for the until their twenty first? Yeah. It's fab fabulous, isn't it? And I, I think numbered editions always get people. I mean, I've got this. I happen to have this on my desk uh, while we're talking about it. The uh, the Cheetah oh, Black Bay Chrono Dark. The first time that officially the House of Wilsdorf has released an actual numbered edition um, yeah. that's limited. So again, that it's that key thing is the finite. I know yeah. they've done other watches that are numbered um, from Cheetah but they're only ever going to do the same number of people that have been capped for New Zealand. And each time, every year, new players are capped, they're going to produce new watches with those numbers on. Um, so that's, I think at the minute, it's about 1,100. Maybe they'll do three or four a year. So, yeah, collectors love that. Yeah. But you just said about numbers, 1,100. That's, for me, still quite a lot. Yeah, yeah, of course. You know, and so for me, when I look at those halls, and you've been to those halls, I'm sure, where there's, there's the, uh, the vintage dealers dealing with each other. Yeah. And you see tons of watches and you just go, okay. And then, then you kind of, it, it, it's Chrono 24 on, on kind of, yeah. um, what's the, on speed is yeah. probably the best yeah, way yeah. of saying it. Yeah. And you see, you know, so let's say that watch that you just said, you know, I, I look at that and probably there will be 20 of those, you know, in a couple of, in a year's time or two years time turning up and people going, oh my God. And then you'll go to a local dealer and you'll go and they'll go, oh my God, I've just got this special, you know, there's only a, a you know, but you've already seen them at the shows yeah, and yeah. there's 20 of them. So that's, that's my kind of yeah. thing where, you know, your one, the Hodinkee ones, you know, the time and tide, the you know all of these yeah. special editions, the yeah. the Mr. Porter pieces from us, you know the Zenith exclusive pieces, you know that yeah. I, I am segueing onto that wonderful photograph that is not done by me. It's uh, yeah. it was done. Let's share uh, that now. Let's do that now. There we go. So talk talk us through this. So this is radar. This is this for me was. Um, 
Look, I love the El Primera. I love our partnership with Zenith. This is built by Zenith, designed by us, built by Zenith, sold through their um, boutiques around the world. It was um, it it was inspired by Japan. Um, I I love this subdial. The subdial, right subdial, all illuminates. So that was something that I wanted to do. Um, I love the tachometer that comes from. Um, some of the vintage we went basically i de deep dived into their um into their thing i can see you're drinking so that's awesome i, I kind of now wanting to know what the cocktail is but that's uh I, 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 so if i told you george i'd have to kill you sorry oh okay um and then um, secret but, recipe. this is a deep dive into the archive of zenith um and we pulled out different watches we d pulled out i mean the sub dial count comes from a pocket watch um, and you know, so when you look at the Zenith archive, it was just, it was amazing to be there mm. and chatting through the design team and, um, Roman that I'm sure you, you know, very well, uh, he, him and I were chatting back and forth. What do we want to do? It's also, you know, how do you go from the solar blue that was such a great success with that wonderful blue dial that just builds brings you in and this is we did the opposite we did the we did the black you know to come in and it, and it and it just it's quite mesmerizing when you look at it in the flesh and you go and it just goes like that and it brings you in so that was one of our things of, of what we wanted to do and then the illumination and the tachometer is great and that just everything about it it comes together in in that now I'm not pitching the watch. I'm not selling the watch, but it, I just love that came together and it was something yeah. kind of. It's great. This, yeah, it's such a lot of detail and such passion behind this. And, you know, it's um, easy sometimes to look at these watches and, and, and kind of a lot of it kind of just passively take on and look at it. But to hear, you know, the passion and the, and the, and the insight behind a watch such as that to me is very interesting. Um, Okay, I'm going to talk about, if this is right, I'm going to talk about the Carbon Monaco. Oh, yeah, okay, cool. In fact, I'll go straight into a share of that. Because I can, I know that everyone, I probably bore people senseless of, of, uh, of doing this. Um, uh, actually, it's got the same date. So um, this is triple X. Um, so this was the prototype. Um, uh, so I'm really pleased to have the prototype. It's uh, um, this at Basel was handed to me. This actual watch was handed to me by Jean-Claude Beaver. Wow. I had, I had, I'd, I'd been a part of the design, you know, been a part, we'd been, we designed it. Mm -hmm. There was a wish list of things that we wanted to do. Carbon case, aqua blue, sub dials. Um, you know, I, I'm, uh, I'm gonna probably do that so that you can see, but you can see the, um, yeah. I don't know if you can. Um, yeah. I'm sure it's bloody, uh, there yeah. you go. Yeah, wow, yeah. It's so, alive. But it is. It's one of those things when you look at it. Um, this watch made, this actual watch made me almost fall over. And I think I did fall over on the Basel stand <laughs> because I was, I was blown away. I was blown away. Um, you know, it, it pulled the whole relationship together. Um, you know, Tag Heuer is a great, great company. And you know the Monaco iconic. I, people will be bored of why why the subdials illuminate, but the reason is because when I was a kid, I used to watch Le Mans, and the only thing I remember was the two white subdials of Steve McQueen's Monaco, and so that's why the they illuminated why we did Aqua Blue. Um, you know this was a thing that I didn't imagine happening, but there's a little Hoya in Aqua Blue right there. And that was, those little touches were the coolest thing. Mm -hmm. And having triple X was the coolest, you know, as I say, this is awesome. But, you know, when you look at Tag Heuer, they are a company steeped in history. Mm -hmm. They're steeped in racing history. Mm -hmm. they're, they're future makers of watches, you know, and they've also experimented with cases. They've experimented with designs. They've yeah. had great relationships with great brands, great people. You know, you look at it and you go, it is amazing. And then I'm sure you've met Catherine from the archive yes. department. Yeah. I mean, you realize what has happened in Hoyer's history from ring timers to timing of, of sports to, 
I, I mean, I, 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 could have, I could spend ages showing you my stopwatch collection mm -hmm. because I, I literally have got loads of uh, Hoyer stopwatches. And, you know, you look at things, you know, even down to, I'm, 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 I've got another watch because I've changed the battery, but I've got, I don't oh, know if you can cool. see it, but it's, it's a Ferrari Hoyer. Yeah. And, you know, that was their relationship. Mm -hmm. So they, 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 they were the first ones to do great partnerships like this. You yeah. know, they really pushed all of this. They were like, let's do it. Let's, let's go that. You know, Jack Hoyer really pushed the boundaries. Um, and the Hoyer family, you know, you look at the whole history. And now LVMH have done an amazing thing. You know, the engineering, the, the ingenious side of it. And even like the new connected. You know, a lot of people would go, why? But now you go, actually, yes. You know, I, I, I've been using the connected for running. And I'm just like, this is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and it's great. It's lightweight. It feels good. It's and it works as a watch. It's a circular screen. It's it's cool. Yeah. You, you know, that's that's me going on a, a, a kind of a different progression. But the Monaco, when we were doing the Monaco, I always wanted that lightweight Monaco um, mm -hmm. on my wrist. Yeah. I I loved the idea of this. I I, I loved that Jean Claude just went, yeah, let's do it. Um, you know, I, I, I basically, I was asked what, what designs do you want? What would you like to do? And there was option A and there was option Z. I mean, literally we, I did option Z was just putting my name on, on a normal watch. That was option Z and option A was carbon Monaco, aqua blue, boom, 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 boom. And so I was going through and I did option B and option C and option and Jean Claude just went, it's option A. And I was just like, okay. Cool. Wow. I, you know, and like literally that was the shopping list. And then there was right there. So that, that for me, that the Monaco, that was, and to see it on stand and be at Basel and, you know, sad that Basel's gone because for me, that was the happiest memory of going on stage and having Jean Claude next to me and being like a giddy kid. Yeah. And realizing how amazing Tag Heuer and the whole business is. And, you know, you look at Zenith and Tag and, you know, yeah. Bulgari, they really are rock stars. And, you know, that's the thing. You look at that Monaco, you look at the Monza, you look at the Silverstone, you look at all those case shapes. Mm. They're iconic case shapes. Yeah. And then they're cool. And that's, that's something that I think is amazing. Yeah, the Silverstone is um, actually really, I, it's one of my favorites. I think it's quite a quite a cool looking watch and and again on un, un, maybe misunderstood underappreciated whatever you know because th this is something that I, I don't want to go off on too much of a tangent but you mentioned Le Mans you've shown us the uh, the Hoya Ferrari watch there is a definite link isn't there and certainly with some collectors a link between watches and cars we've got a couple of mutual friends James Marks Paul Maudsley these guys have a, it's almost like an equal passion for cars and watches um, and that's that is a very important part of your life isn't it the cars um i would say to you is definitely 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 um i'm looking around to see if i've got my uh, racing time list here but i haven't um i i've just uh, i finished um uh putting some into a car at the moment um some old stopwatch i've got an uh ortavia uh ortavia stopwatch that i put into a car dash oh. mount um and i i think to myself is cars and watches go hand in hand mechanical instrument why why during lockdown have i taken a radiator off one car looked at another engine and stripped an mgb engine because you know it, it, i couldn't get near watches you know we we're still selling throughout lockdown but you know, I couldn't get into the office. I couldn't kind of get into the nitty gritty. And, and my, my equipment at home is not, it's, I, I've got a lot more wrenches than I have, um, you know, fine watchmaking tools because I left them in London. So yeah. that was kind of one of those things that I was like, okay. Mm. So that, that, that was my, um, you know, that's, that's kind of uh, why I think you're right. It goes hand in hand and, you know, dash timers, but it also go, you know, do we need a watch? We don't, you know, we, we tell the time by our phone. Yeah. You know, so it, it, do we need it? But do we want it? Hell yes. Absolutely. And that, and that for me is that thing, you know, and 
it is a weird and wonderful world, but you kind of go, I love to have a watch on my wrist. I'd feel naked without a watch on my wrist.